Singer presents David Niven. Do you mind if I shut the door? You are bound for Claborough. Yes, I'm visiting with... Well, how do you know? It's obvious that you don't remember me, Mr. Langford. You seem very familiar, but I'm afraid I don't place you. Dwerry House. John Dwerry House. Oh, of course, Alison's brother. Yes, we met at, um... At the wedding? That's right, Alison and Jeff's wedding. Three years ago. You were home then on leave from somewhere in the east? Yes, Indian Civil Service, Burma. Well, I'm home for good now. This is my first weekend in England, and Alison and Jeff have very kindly asked me out. I expect you're going to stay there too for the weekend. No. No, I'm on my way to a business transaction. Do you feel all right? Are you ill? Why do you ask? You look rather thinner than I remember Alison's brother, and you are rather pale. I have in this briefcase 75,000 pounds. I beg your pardon? Tonight I shall purchase the right of way for the new branch line of the East Anglian Railway between Blackwater and Stockbridge. Did you say you were carrying 75,000 pounds around with you? You mean in the bank draft? Cash. Cash? Why not? Besides being a director of the East Anglian line, I'm also the principal attorney. I have a position of high authority and trust. I'm sure you must have, but cash, isn't that rather risky? How? I mean, ought you to go around telling people you're carrying all that amount of money? I can trust you, can't I? <laughs> of course you can, that's not the point. You might tell somebody else who... Why should I tell anyone except you, Mr. Langford? Your ticket, sir? Oh, yes. Let me. Claybrough. Are we going to be on time? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, why didn't he take your ticket? Didn't he even ask you for it? They never do. Oh, because you're a director of the line. I have a lifetime pass. Mr. Treyhouse, are you quite sure you're all right? Very sure. Get off. I'm glad we met, Langford. Very glad. Thank you. When you get to Claverer, I shall be obliged if you will give my sister a message for me. Well, certainly, I'll, I'll be glad to. Ask her if she's had the fireplace fixed. What's the fireplace? The flue was stopped up. I very nearly set the whole bedroom on fire. Burnt up the blue rug. You can remember that, can't you? Yes, I think so. Good night, then. Mr. Dreyhouse, where did the other passenger go? Passenger, sir? Yes, the one who was in the compartment with me. How's that again, sir? In the compartment? Oh, never mind. How long do we stop here? Only until we drop the mail back, sir. But I wouldn't suggest you getting off now. Dwerry House. 
Halt! The Burmese have the answer to the whole thing. Life loves everything. They believe that amity gives provision, that provision gives contentment, that contentment gives peace, and peace is happiness. This is utopia. Why look any further? Since you seem to have found utopia out there, why did you come home? For the fog and the nasty weather. Well, gentlemen, here's to England. A place built entirely upon coal and surrounded by nothing but fish. Only a socialist government could provide a shortage of both. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, by the way, here's to the new branch line of the East Anglian Railroad. What branch line? Well, the one from Blackwater to Stockbridge, of course. Well, Dwerry House should have told me if this was supposed to be hush hush. Dwerry House? Jeff, I had no idea the new line was to be a secret. If I'd been talking out of school, I... You've seen my brother-in-law? Yes. Why shouldn't I have? So Dwerry House is in Burma. I never said he was in Burma. Where is he, then? Well, he's here in England, of course. In England? That's not possible. What do you mean, it's not possible? I travelled with him tonight on the 615. On the East Anglian line? On our railroad? <laughs> he wouldn't dare. Are you gentlemen going to solve all the problems of the world tonight? Or will you give some attention to us? I suppose we had better join the ladies. Gentlemen. <coughs> Sorry, dear. Bill, you didn't know John very well, did you? How can you be certain you'd recognize him after all this time? Look, Jeff. <coughs> I saw him and I talked with him. What's so terrible about him anyway? Is he a typhoid carrier or something? Worse. He's an embezzler. Allison's brother? Yes. Four months ago, he was carrying 75,000 pounds to close a deal for our new branch line. He disappeared. He's not been found nor heard from since. <laughs> well, that doesn't make much sense. He told me he was carrying 75,000 pounds tonight. <laughs> That's preposterous. Bill, you just couldn't have seen him. Not on the East Anglian line. Now, just a minute, Jeff. Are you questioning my eyesight or my honesty? I not only saw him, I can prove it. Here. Where'd you get this? <laughs> he dropped it when he got off at Blackwater. Allison was so certain he was dead. To her, somehow, it was easier thinking of him dead rather than a thief. Jeff, I'm sorry. I no idea I'd stumbled into something like this. Then he's alive. John is alive. Where is he, Bill? Darling, don't get your hopes up. This could easily be a case of mistaken identity. The cigar case. And the message. Message? Yes, he told me to ask you if you'd had the fireplace in the bedroom fixed. He said the last time he was here, he almost burned up the blue rug. The blue rug. It is John. He is alive. And he's come back. But why? I rode the 615 this evening. There's a gentleman with me. Would you describe him to Mr. Pender here, please? I beg your pardon, sir. There's another passenger in the compartment. I would have remembered him. Do you remember me? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you were bound for a Claybra. That's right. Well, this other man... Did I take his ticket, sir? No, of course not. He had a pass. Oh, there you see, sir. If he had a pass, I'd have remembered him for fair. He must be lying. He couldn't have helped seeing Dwerry House. 
John Dwerrios? Yes. Oh, Mr. Pendleson, if I'd seen Mr. Dwerrios, I'd do me duty like we'd been instructed to up and down the line. I'd have called you, sir, or the home office. I'd have reported it for sure. Then you didn't see him. He swears. You couldn't have helped seeing him. Oh, sir, I wouldn't withhold information like that. Not with 30 years in the line and me pension coming up. Thank you. Oh, will that be all, sir? Yes. Jeff, you're not going to believe that. That man must have been paid to keep his mouth shut. I don't understand it. You mean you don't believe me? I didn't say that. But I had hoped we'd find him or a lead on him before we had to face the board of directors and Sir Charles. You make the Sir Charles sound like an ogre. Well, he's not far from it. Now, if I understand you correctly, Mr. Langford, Dwerry House told you he was carrying 75,000 pounds to purchase a branch line for the railroad. That's right. And when he got off the train, and you went after him with the cigar case, he met a man whom you describe as uh, middle-aged, middle-sized, wearing a grey trimmed beard. That's correct. This is your contention. In spite of the fact that the conductor, who knew Mr. Dwerry House very well by sight, disagrees with you. If you prefer to take the conductor's word instead of mine, then that's your prerogative. But every employee on the East Anglian line knew Mr. Dwerry House by sight. Why didn't any of them come forward and say that they'd seen him? I don't know. And furthermore, I don't care. I only came here as a favor to Jeff. Sir Charles, there is the man with the gray beard. Now, if we could find him. Oh, yes, the nebulous man with the gray beard. Middle-aged, you say? Yes, middle-aged, middle-sized, and with a gray trimmed beard. That description would fit many of my friends. Now, I come to think of it, Rakes, my secretary, has a grey beard. And, uh, uh, Mr. Hardwick here. Now, he fits your description perfectly. Perhaps, Mr. Langford, he is your man. You know very well he's not. Now, just exactly what are you trying to get at, Sir Charles? Oh, you don't believe I met Dwerry House? Oh, that I believe that you met him. The cigar case and the fact that you knew about the branch line and the 75,000 pounds testifies to that. But... I do not believe that you met him on the 6.15 last night. Sir Charles. All right, Jeff, I, I want to hear this. Go ahead, Sir Charles. Where do you believe I met him? In Burma. In Burma? <laughs> then where did I find the cigar case? You didn't find it. He gave it to you as proof that you're his representative. His representative? Let's come to the point, Mr. Langford. How much of the 75,000 pounds will John Dwerry House return to us for immunity? Bill, wait, please. The man with a beard. This is the man. The man who met Dwerry House at Blackwater Station. I tell you, Sir Charles, this is the man I saw at Blackwater Station. The man with a beard. Uh, the report you wanted, sir. Uh, Riggs, do you know this man? No, sir. Have you ever seen him? I'm afraid not, sir. He says he's never seen you, Langford. I didn't say he had seen me. I said I saw him. I don't understand. You saw me? I saw you at Blackwater Station talking to John Dwerry House. Well, Rakes? You must be mistaken. You, you couldn't have seen me. It's not possible. I saw you on the station platform about 7 o'clock last night. Last night? It doesn't matter what he says. There's no question about it. This is the man. You're positive? You would swear to that? Absolutely. Sir Charles, Bill is an old friend of mine. His integrity is beyond question. They were standing underneath a lamppost. I saw him clearly talking to Dwerry House. It's an interesting thing, Langford. But according to you, everybody is lying except you. The conductor, now rakes. Next, you'll be accusing me. Well, ask him where he was last night. Go rakes. ahead, ask him. Rakes, tell the gentleman where you were. Go on. Uh, you worked at the office until what time? Why, uh, until the usual hour, six. And then what did you do? Why, you know, sir. I went home with you. Tell Mr. Langford. Well, uh, Sir Charles Carr called for us at six, and then we went to his house. We had a bit of supper together in his library, and then we, uh, we worked on these reports until uh, half past twelve. I'm sorry, Langford, but it's all true. Rakes wasn't out of my sight last night for more than five minutes. And I don't live anywhere near Blackwater. So if you persist in accusing Rakes, you also accuse me. 
Because I'm his alibi. Uh, get me Scotland Yard. It's Mr. Langford, isn't it? Yes. Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. Glad to have you back from Burma, Mr. Langford. Oh, I'm flattered. A uh, cigarette? No, thank you. Oh. Is this a new function of Scotland Yard? Welcoming every returning civil servant back into the fold? Well, uh, not everyone, Mr. Langford. Let's see now. Uh, you're retired from the service? No, I resigned. Oh, and you had, what was it now, 15 years altogether? Yes, 15 years. Hmm, too bad. Another ten years and you'd have been pensioned. You know, had he changed much? Who? Bloody how? From the last time you met, I mean. You were old friends, you say? I didn't say, and we weren't. I've only seen him once before, about three years ago, at a wedding. Yes, of course, a man changes in three years. Lord knows I didn't wear these things three years ago. Yes, we all get on. <laughs> we do, don't we? I understand that you're going to reopen your family home down in Sussex. Yes, that's right. Going to live there? I plan to, yes. Most people are selling properties like your home in Sussex. The upkeep is so great nowadays. Well, I'm rather behind the times. I've been away for 15 years. So you didn't like Burma then? On the contrary, I like Burma very much indeed. Oh, I don't know what could have given me that impression. You want to know why I resigned, is that it, Inspector? How I could afford to quit and forego the pension. Well, uh, I shouldn't want you to think that I was prying into your affairs, Mr. Langford. No, I didn't think that for a moment, Inspector. You know, uh, they ought to like those platforms better. That one at Blackwater, for instance. If you're suggesting that I didn't see rakes, you should check my army record. You'll find that my eyesight is 20-20. And as to my resigning without a pension, my bank will tell you that my finances are in good order, too. There's a photograph of Dwerry House. Well, uh, so nice of you to stop by and chat, Mr. Langford. Very nice of you to ask me, Inspector. What does Scotland Lord want? Well, the same thing, I and mean, now the implications are coming home to roost on me. So oh, I'm sorry, Bill. I, I didn't want you to get involved in this. That is not your fault. Did you see Rakes? Yes, I talked to him. What did he say? There was no shaking his story. He was with Sir Charles last night. Did you check that? I even went as far as checking on Sir Charles. I tell you, Bill, I feel you must be wrong somewhere. Then Sir Charles is implicated. What? Why not? It's not impossible, is it? Sir Charles, an embezzler? <laughs> the idea is ridiculous. Well, they think I am. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Bill. I'm so mixed up by this whole thing, I can't even think straight. There's an answer to this thing somewhere around. Did you get Rakes' home address? Yes. Here it is. 12 Sudbury Road.
Good evening, Mr. Riggs. I have nothing to say to you. Well, maybe I have something to say to you. There's nothing to talk about. Leave me alone! Get out! Where's Dwerry House? Dwerry House? Yes, Dwerry House. He came in here. I saw him. In here? This is some kind of trick. You can't frighten me. Riggs, look behind you. Dwerry House. What are you trying to do to me? You can have the money back, Dwayne House. I don't want it. I didn't mean to take it. Go away. Go away. You're dead. I killed you. I killed you. You're dead. Wait, wait. It can't be him. I killed him. I killed him. Come, come, come. What's wrong here? He thinks he killed a man. And did he, sir? No, of course not. The man he thinks he killed inside that house. Oh, go and look for yourself. He's in the parlor. I will. I'll take it easy, Rachel. Everything's going to be all right. I killed him. The money. Hid the money. Buried it on the floor in the kitchen. I didn't mean to steal it. All that money. The 75,000 pounds? Then you embezzled it. It wasn't Dwerry House. I killed him. Took the money. Oh, make him go away and leave me alone. He's dead, I tell you, he's dead! Where is he? Did you find him? I don't know what's going on here, but there's nobody in that house. Of course, he's in the parlor, I told you. Yes, yes, I understand. But you better come along too, sir. Rakes confessed to the murder, and we found Dwerry House's body buried under a chalk pit a mile from his house under a pile of rocks. We also found the money buried under the kitchen floor. But if he's dead, who was that I talked to in the train? Nobody. Well, now, look here, Inspector. Are you trying to tell me I'm crazy? Let's put it this way. You were on your way to visit your friends. The last time you'd seen them, you'd taken that same train to their wedding. Your mind just slipped back a cog this time and fastened on one of the guests, Dwerry House. Are you suggesting that I materialized Dwerry House out of my mind? Let's say you fell asleep and dreamed it. Is this cigar case part of my dream? According to this report, the train car you rode in had been on a siding for months. It was put back into service the day of the night you rode in it to accommodate the holiday trade. And it hadn't been properly cleaned. The cigar case must have lodged itself in the cushion. That's just assumption. Perhaps. But this isn't. The lost and found claim that John Dwerry House made to the company for this same cigar case two weeks before he was murdered. Satisfied? Inspector, are you sure that I didn't... See a ghost? Quite. Well, then who was it who frightened Rakes into confessing? That's easy. Rakes merely thought he saw the ghost, because he had a guilty conscience. Now you make it all sound so plausible. There's a logical explanation for everything. Well, I hope I haven't been too big a nuisance to you. Nuisance? Indeed not. Why, we've been able to wrap the whole thing up, thanks to your... Uh, well, anyway, uh, uh, thank you very much indeed. Good night, Inspector. Inspector. Yes? enjoyed having you this evening as guests of the Singer Sewing Machine Company. Won't you join us again two weeks from tonight when Dick Powell will be our star on Four Star Playhouse. Thank you for being with us and good night.